So here we're going to give a brief introduction to the mid-ocean ridges. This is such an important tectonic environment that we have almost a universally recognized acronym, MOR, and they have uh, rock types that are dominated by basalt, which we refer to as MORB. So we'll talk about MORBs quite a bit, and we'll introduce that idea here, even though I'm the possessive S. So uh, here we have a couple of diagrams from the very nice uh, uh, petrology textbook by John Winter. Uh, this map here is showing the extent of the ocean ridge system. I'm blocking it out with some other diagrams here, but here's the East Pacific rise, and then it comes and wraps around over here, comes out over here where we can't see. Here's the northern part of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Uh, there are about 90,000 uh, kilometers uh, in extent. These, the total extent of all of these mid-ocean ridges added up uh, can circle the globe many times, as you, a couple of different times, as you can see here, uh, from the way these things curve around the Earth's surface. So they are a dominant form uh, of plate tectonics, uh, and the mid-ocean ridges are responsible for creating mid-ocean ridge basalt, these MORB, and those MORB cover two-thirds of Earth's surface. So two-thirds of Earth are covered by all this blue stuff. Well, the blue is oceans, but underneath those ocean basins is a rock type that is referred to as mid-ocean ridge basalt or morb. So this is the dominant rock type, in, at least in terms of the aerial coverage on our planet. Now, how do we think it forms? Here's this very nice cross-section shown here where we have a couple of subduction zones. We don't have to worry about the numbers here. Everything green is the mantle, so that would be mantle peridotite. Green is an appropriate color so, because it, it probably would look green if you could look at it due to the dominant uh, minerals olivine and pyroxene. And over here, we have a spreading ridge. So this lithosphere that's shown in dark green is being ripped apart, and as it rips apart, this warmer mantle is able to come in and take its place. And because it's warmer, it will partially melt. And we'll show that in a different video. That partial melting will give us a layer of volcanic rock, which you can barely see in this diagram. But up here at the top layer of that dark green uh, is yet an even darker green material, and that's the mid-ocean ridge basalt. Uh, so that mid-ocean ridge basalt is floating on top of this mantle lithosphere. So this is peridotite there, this is peridotite, but that very thin layer there is basalt. That's the volcanic material that is a result of partial melting and spreading at the mid-ocean ridge. Now I'm showing this other diagram here to give us a close-up view as, what, what, as to what is going on in this area here. So if we were able to zoom in, what would it look like? Well, we have the mantle down here. This light green happens to be the same as this dark green here. Um, well, not precisely. It, it could really be part of the asthenosphere that's coming in here because that dark green is being ripped away completely. Anyway, it's the mantle that's made of peridotite. And then we have melts that are making their way up to form this mush. And that mush uh, is a mixture of crystals plus melt. And that melt can be extracted as the mush collapses. A certain amount of melt is expelled to give us these melt layers that are shown here. And then that melt layer uh, it can be buoyant and allow for the eruption of volcanic rocks. He's showing it as a, a layer two. We'll look at these layers in a moment. Uh, we have dikes that represent the transport of this melt to the surface. Sometimes the melt gets trapped in those dikes and they freeze, so we get a frozen record of the transport process. But they can also make it to the surface and erupt in this layer two here that is all volcanic material, volcanic rock, and that volcanic rock is made entirely of basalt, a very uniform kind of basalt, almost always with about 49, 58 percent silica. We have some uh, pillow ridges. Uh, there is a lot of pillow basalt that's being erupted here, but for our purposes here, what we really want to focus on are uh, the melt layers, and then what about the mush that gets left behind? So we have melt that's being extracted out of the mush, but there's still a, some crystals and some liquid that gets trapped in here. Uh, and if it crystallizes, as it moves further away from the ridge, it gets colder. So this is the hot part of the system here. So this is all hot and it gets cooler as we move away from the spreading ridge. 
So this is the center of the spreading ridge right here where the hot material is rising. As we move to cooler regions, all that stuff will solidify and we get gabbro. And so gabbro is a mix of uh, plagioclase plus um, some, a little bit of olivine and pyroxene. Maybe some amphibole if there's water, but there's not a lot of water in the mantle here, so we probably wouldn't get much in the way of amphibolite. So mostly plagioclase with pyroxene uh, uh, plus or minus olivine. This transition zone here is, again, kind of an extension of this mushy layer. We're going from a mush to a transition to a gabbro. It's not really changing much in composition. This is as much as anything to show the the transition as we go from a hot layer to something that's cold enough that it would actually be a rock. So we have these mid-ocean ridges where the plates are being ripped apart, partial melting. All those partial melts give us this area in here, which is a mixture of melts and crystals. Those melts can get extracted to give us volcanic rocks here, which we get at the top. Uh, and then some gabbros that are left behind and these dikes that record that melt transport process.